Subject of today's video was a big time recruit coming out of high school, was a superstar for the Buckeyes, and got shot in the face. He is one of the more crazier stories in college football over the last few years, and unfortunately it does not have the storybook ending that you guys are probably wishing for. In today's video, I want to talk about a former blue chip recruit who went through some extreme highs and lows at Ohio State, and we're going to talk about what happened to him, his rise, and what ultimately went wrong. But before we can get into it, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, and we need your help to hit 100k, so be sure to hit that subscribe button, smash that like button for the algorithm, and turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's get started. The What Happened To series really accelerated the growth of my channel, and sometimes I don't do enough of those videos. Today we're going to get back to one of them, and we're going to talk about former Ohio State defensive lineman Haskell Garrett. But in order to understand what went wrong for him, we first need to go back in time. Haskell Garrett was born to a normal family in Vermont, and he was a huge fan of the game of football. He developed a love for a certain school at the time, and that school was Ohio State. His friend had a ton of Buckeyes posters and players on his wall, so Haskell naturally became a fan of them. But there was a lot going on with him before he could ever dream of going there. His father passed away from cancer when he was only 13 years old, and he began to heal in the Aloha state. It became important to him. He said, quote, Kawhi helped me a lot. It really did in my development as a young man, and it helped me through my transition as a kid. Moving to Hawaii, I had just lost my father, who had passed away from stomach cancer. It allowed me to reconnect with my roots, and I was always intrigued about my Polynesian heritage and where I come from. When I was embraced and moved to Hawaii, it allowed me to really dive into those morals, those values Polynesian people come from, and it allowed me to carry on those morals and values with me today. He had found himself there, but the family decided to leave the Aloha State for the state of Nevada. Haskell started to put all his emotion and time into football, and it would pay off for him. He was invited to play at Bishop Gorman High School, and he happily accepted that, as they were one of the biggest high school football powerhouses in the country. He had all the skills and physical traits to be a dominant lineman, and he also produced. He became one of the country's best defensive tackle recruits as he finished with 50 tackles, 20 TFLs, and 7.5 sacks in 2016 as a senior. He blew up as a recruit while he was there, but he had always had a plan. He said, quote, I have not visited any schools. When I came to Bishop Gorman as a sophomore, I had a three-year plan. The first year was focused on grades and how they do things at Gorman to get used to the school and the city. Last season, I wanted to focus on football, and then my senior year, I'd focus on recruiting. When that did eventually happen, he had a strange recruitment as he got an offer from Ohio State and committed a week later without ever visiting. Why would he do that? He said, quote, After I got off the phone with Urban Meyer, that's when I knew I wanted to commit to Ohio State. Just knowing his resume, his history of winning games, and how he's getting dudes ready for life, whether as a man, for the NFL, or whatever the next step in life was, that was it. He really prepares them in a good way, and I wanted to try and stay closer to my family in the East and play for a big-time football team. That's what makes Ohio State the best place for me. He had a ton of major offers, but chose the Buckeyes over the likes of Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Oregon, USC, Texas A&M, and UCLA. Fun fact, he was good friends with both Tate Martell and Nebraska wide receiver Tyjon Lindsey. He was a huge deal, as according to 24-7 Sports, he was a four-star recruit, the number six defensive tackle, and the 68th best player in the class of 2017. He had already overcome a lot, and he had the right mindset, so how would he do at a place like Ohio State? Haskell would arrive at Ohio State buried on the depth chart, and he finished with three total tackles his freshman year in 2017. In 2018, his role barely increased as he finished with seven tackles and one pass deflection. 2019, things would also be very slow for him as he only finished with 10 total tackles. Through three years in Columbus, he had only had 20 tackles to his name, and he desperately needed a breakout season in order to be an NFL player and to live up to his potential. First, he'd have to go through a major, major roadblock. Obviously, there was something that went on in the world that caused havoc on the 2020 college football season, and because of that, the Big Ten football season was delayed. On the night of August 30th, he was trying to break up an altercation between a man and a woman on the Ohio State campus. After trying to do the right thing, the man had a gun and fired it at Garrett. The bullet went in one of his cheeks and out the other. In the process, it went, it went both through his teeth and his tongue. He was apparently bleeding a lot, and it sounded like he was talking with marbles in his mouth. I mean, think about how crazy this is. He was shot in the face. Had the bullet had gone a couple of inches differently, it could have went through his brain or anything that could have killed him. Instead, he was lucky to be alive, and Columbus police officers found a trail of blood and a shell casing at the scene. They followed that trail of blood back to his apartment and found Garrett while he was there. Thankfully, he was going to be okay, 
but he was presented with a major crossroads in his life. He could have quit, but he persevered through it and had this to say about the situation. He said, quote, as an athlete, you see things and you want to help out and intervene and stuff like that. Sometimes it's better to just call the proper authorities and just kind of not take the approach where you've got to be hands on. Sometimes there's consequences to being hands on. Four days before the season started, he was cleared to play and this meant everything to Haskell. This transformed him from a role player to a star and an inspirational figure. As Ryan Day said to quote, I think you're seeing the best version of Haskell. Everybody here is very proud of what he's overcome. Not just the way he's playing, but the way he's handling himself, the way he's leading, and also the way he's practicing. Haskell would have a breakout 2020 season as he finished with 20 tackles, one pass deflection, a sack, and an interception that went back for a touchdown. Because of that terrific performance, he was named a first team All-American and helped Ohio State get to the college football playoff. He could have left for the NFL, but with his extra year of eligibility, he decided he was going to come back. He said, quote, a lot of things went into that decision. I wanted everybody to know that I'm not a one hit wonder. I've gone through this process of being at Ohio State and being under defensive line coach Larry Johnson. I just want to prove it again. And many are wondering, can I do it again? I have no doubts in my mind and I am who I am and I am what I put on film. So would this age well or would it go bad? Well, he actually had a really good year. He finished with 22 tackles, one pass deflection, and a career high five and a half sacks. Because of that, he was named a first team All Big Ten selection and a second team All American. Not only that, but he paid tribute to his roots as he ended up winning the Polynesian Player of the Year award and the state of Hawaii was very proud of him. They said, quote, we congratulate Haskell on an outstanding season. His accomplishments are a source of great pride for the Polynesian community. So he had now had a good five year career at Ohio State and had overcome getting shot in the face. Because of that, most mock drafts projected him as a fourth or fifth round pick and he was probably going to be a very valuable asset to a team. He said, quote, I'm a very highly motivated guy. I'm a very experienced player. I've played in big games my whole career and I bring value and depth to a team. Unfortunately though, this would not happen as he would go undrafted. His stock had completely crashed, but at least he was able to choose his destination. He chose the Tennessee Titans and he tried his absolute best to make a roster. He'd play hard all summer long, but unfortunately Haskell was part of the first wave of cuts on the Titans. Based on my research, I cannot really find what he is up to now, as it doesn't actually seem like another team has taken a chance on him. This is extremely unfortunate, and honestly makes no sense. Not only does Haskell have prototypical size for a defensive tackle, but he also had great stats, is a hard worker, played in a great system, and has a ton of experience. To me, it makes no sense why he's not on an NFL roster, and for one of the first times on this channel, I actually can't really conclude what has gone wrong. I think he just got a bad break, and there's something that we don't know that went on behind the scene. Well, he did have a weird injury that did not affect his football play. It's not like he was a bust in college and it's not like he was undersized. This one makes no sense to me. And if you have any idea why, be sure to let me know down below. This guy is a very inspiring story as he could have transferred after his first three years or quit football after getting shot in the face. It'd be very terrifying to experience that. And the fact that he came back and played like a star was very awesome to see. And he's one of my favorite Ohio State football players over the last few years. Hopefully he can use this story to motivate and help other people out. And I hope he finds himself on an NFL roster soon. But what do you guys think? Why did Haskell Garrett go undrafted and not make a team? Who's another player who has a crazy story I can take a look at next? And what topic, player, or situation can I take a look at in my next video? Be sure to let me know down below. Smash that like button if you want to support today's video. And check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about the rise of Jackson Smith and Jigba. Hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace. Thank you.